Does this happen to you? You start solving a lead code problem. You get some difficulty in it, but no worries. You take some hints. Maybe you look at the solution or you look at the editorial, you understand it, and then you solve the problem. But after two or three weeks, you come across the same problem again, and you've forgotten. You've forgotten what technique did you apply. You've forgotten what algorithm did you apply, and you've forgotten how to solve the problem. And it's like solving the same problem all over again. You have to go through the entire process all over again. So first of all, this is a very normal thing. If this is happening to you, you don't need to worry. This happens with everyone. Everyone starts forgetting things after a while, right? And especially as a newbie in DSA, you're going to have these sort of problems initially in your DSA journey. But what I'm going to talk about in today's video is going to make sure that every concept of DSA is going to be cemented in your mind. Okay, I'm going to talk about how you can revise DSA at such a way that you never forget any concept that you're learning. And when you solve a problem, you basically cement that concept in your mind. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Make sure that you watch it till the end. All right, so let's get straight into it. No bluff, no beating around the bush. I'm going to give you two techniques that have helped me a lot in revising DSA and pretty much making sure that I never forget the patterns of DSA. Okay, and it has helped many other people as well. These two techniques are space repetition and active recall. So let's get into active recall first. So let's say you solved a lead code problem. Again, whether you took hints or you took a look at the editorial or you watched the video for it, it is fine. But after you've submitted the code, and first of all, just to remind you, always write the code yourself. So after you've solved the problem, you've submitted the code, the code got accepted, what do you do? Do you get on to the next problem? No. Here's what you're going to do. After solving the problem, step away from your laptop. Or if you're sitting in front of your laptop, just close your laptop. Give yourself five minutes time, close your eyes and run everything back in your mind. Just run everything back. How did you start solving the problem? From the brute force approach, what did you do to optimize it? Just recall it in your mind, everything that you do. Okay, so it will take a couple of minutes and then here's what you need to do. You need to speak out loud and you need to explain the solution to yourself. Okay, imagine you're a second person or third person sitting in front of you. Imagine there's someone else sitting in front of you and you're explaining the solution to them. Do that to yourself. Explain the solution. So if you solved a problem like twosome, explain the solution to yourself. Okay, this is what I did. I used the hash map. I used this two-pointer technique. Just explain it to yourself. Okay, this is what you need to do. So it's going to do two things for you. The first thing is, of course, it's going to cement this in your mind because whatever you speak out loud, your mind remembers better. Second thing, it's going to give you the skill of explaining the solution because in the interview, you don't need to solve the problem quietly and just get it accepted. You need to explain your thought process to the interviewer. And this is something that a lot of people don't have a practice of because they just solve in quietness, right? So doing this will help you in two ways. It will help you in remembering the concept, the pattern better. It will put your brain into that pattern recognition ability. And the second thing, it will help you in understanding how do you explain. It will give you the skill of explaining. So do this. This is a technique called active recall. And let me tell you, a lot of people have used this technique successfully. This was first told to me by a red coder on Code Forces when I had a podcast with him. He told me that he usually does this after every problem that he comes across, after every medium or hard problem that he comes across. So he told me, this red coder told me in a podcast that we recorded together. So this is something that I really want you to follow. It doesn't take more than five to 10 minutes. It hardly takes five minutes. And after every problem, especially the problems where you had a difficulty in, you do need to do this. All right. And now we come to the actual revision part that is spaced repetition. So. First of all, I need you to understand DSA is a bunch of patterns. DSA is nothing but a bunch of patterns. You have around 10, 15 or maybe 10, 15, 20 patterns, depending on how many companies you're targeting. And that's it. Out of these patterns, you can make like thousands and thousands of questions. Like you have lead code has 3000 questions, right? But are the patterns unlimited? No, the patterns are limited. You can have unlimited amount of questions from that. So what you need to do? You need to revise. Once you're revising, what you're doing to your mind is you're feeding it the pattern recognition ability. See, evolution has given all of us this wonderful pattern recognition ability. Once you revise something, your brain subconsciously starts seeing the pattern, whether you like it or not. Your brain will start to see the pattern. It's all about revision. So we talked about our recall. How do you actually revise? Okay. So space repetition. This is the keywords that I use, right? Space repetition. 
So generally it is suggested that you revise in every one, three and seven days. But remove the three, what I'm going to suggest to you is revise every one day and every seven day. This is what you're going to do. Suppose you're doing DSA every day. Today I solve three problems. Now, next day, before I start solving any new problem, I'm going to revise the problem that I did yesterday. Okay, so those three problems that I did yesterday, today I'll be revising them before I move on. Okay, so I'll revise them. And apart from that, like I said, one and seven. So every day you revise the problems that you did yesterday and then seven, meaning let's say Monday to Friday you're solving problems. Take one day completely for revision. So this is what I suggest, right? That do Monday to Friday problem solving and on Saturday, just take out time completely for revision. Just revise everything, okay? Now, how do you revise? That is the main thing, right? So I told you when to revise, you revise every day, the thing that you learned before and every week you revise everything completely. Give one day completely for revision. How do you revise? Let's get into that. First of all, I want you to make a sheet of DSA. So a sheet of your own, open Excel or open Google Sheets and just have, just make a sheet with some columns like problem, the problem name or the link of the problem. And then whether you solved it or not, whether you solved it on the first try or whether you had difficulty, that column. And then the column after that will have a comment. Okay. So this is what you're going to do. Whenever you come across a problem, if you solved it on the first go, well, kudos, nothing to worry about. You can just mark it and go forward, right? Just do the active recall and go forward. But suppose you had an issue in the problem, then you have to say, Ki, no, you didn't solve it on the first try. And then put in the comment, what were you missing? What was the reason that you couldn't solve it on the first try? Was it an algorithm you were missing? Was it a technique that you couldn't grasp? Whatever it was, write it in the comment. So you keep track of these things, right? And while you're revising, what you're going to do first, let's say I'm revising a problem. I'm revising a problem I did last week or I'm revising a problem I did yesterday. This is what you're going to do. Just look at the problem and in your mind, try to frame the solution. If you're able to, well and good. It's still in your mind. You know correctly the pattern is still within your grasp. You move on to the next problem for revision. But let's say you're trying to revise a problem and you're not able to frame the solution in your mind. So give it some time. If you're still not able to frame the solution in your mind, then you refer to your notes, that sheet that I said, right? Then you check that comment and you see, is that comment helping you, whatever you wrote? If now you're able to frame the solution, well and good, code it out. Because you couldn't get the solution in the first try, code it out again. But even if the comment is not helping you, then that means that this is an algorithm or this is a pattern in which you're having difficulty in. So what you need to do, you need to watch a video on that or you need to solve the problem again. Imagine like you're solving the problem again, start from scratch, the entire thing, like either you can take hints or you can watch a video, anything is fine. But do the problem again and again code it yourself, right? And now you know that this is a area, this is a pattern that you're having difficulty in. So you can mark it for future revision again in your sheet. This is why I said you need to have a sheet ready because it's going to tell you, it's going to show you where your weakness is. If you're having a lot of need for revision in graphs, then you weaken graph algorithms and you need more space there. You need more focus there. If you're having such issues in DP, then you need to put more focus there. So have a sheet ready and that sheet is going to tell you where you need to focus on. Okay, but if you continuously do this, the spaced repetition, trust me, your mind is going to automatically go into pattern recognition ability. And whenever you come across a new problem, your brain will start grinding gears and you'll be able to understand. You'll be able to get a few hints. Ki, okay, this might be a two pointer problem. This might be a sliding window problem. All it takes is active recall and spaced repetition, which is spaced revision basically. There's one more benefit of the sheet that is before the interview. Let's say that you got to know like next week is your Amazon's interview or let's say two, three weeks after is your Amazon's interview. What do you do? Are you going to start solving problems again? Are you going to start solving new problems? You don't need to do that. You do company wise problems. That is fine. But you also need to revise. What are you going to use for revision? Your sheet. Go through the sheet again and wherever you feel like there was extra need for revision, wherever you feel you had a weakness in, just revise those concepts because that is where you can be lacking. That is where if a question comes in the interview, you can have issues. So you revise before the interview according to the sheet. The sheet is going to help you a lot in revision before the interview or in general revision. 
So this is the sort of routine I tell people, right? So if you're doing DSA, right, and people ask me, Ki, bhaiya, how many problems should we do a day? How many hours should we do a day? Tell me a routine for DSA. So let me tell you a clear routine that I have seen work very, very well. This is what you need to do. First of all, try to do two or two and a half hours every day, DSA. It's fine if you're doing two hours, that is like well enough, I feel. If you have three to six months of preparation, two, two and a half hours, up to three hours is enough time, I feel, right? So what do you need to do? So what do you need to do? Monday to Friday, solve problems. Grind hard, solve problems. And then on Saturday, the complete days for revision, like I already told you. Revise, no new problems on Saturday. Just revise the concepts, revise the problems you have done. Now on Sunday, you do contest. Because now you'll know whether you're learning with how you're doing with new problems, right? Or blind problems. Because in a contest, you will not know what topic it is. If you're using, if you're solving generally on lead code, you can know, okay, this is, this is XYZ topic. Or if you're using some sheet like Striver sheet, then you know this is XYZ topic. But in a contest, you will not know. So in Sunday, give contests on lead code. So if you're able to wake up early, then you can give contests on lead code in the morning because it happens in morning. Or would I suggest just give virtual contests? So take out time and do two things. First, give a virtual contest, which will be blind for you. Obviously, you'll not know what topic it is. And try to solve as many as you can. And at least the first three upsolve. Okay? So give contests and upsolve on Sunday. Apart from that, do company-wise problems on Sunday. So if you're targeting Amazon, just search Amazon interview questions, sort it by latest, and then solve those problems. So Sunday is going to be for new problems and company-wise problems. So contest and company-wise problems do on Sunday. Monday to Friday, do your regular problem solving. Whatever you're doing according to a sheet, according to a list, that is fine. And on Saturday, it is for revision. This is a really good routine that you can follow for DSA because everything is happening here. You have time for revision, you have time for learning, and you have time for basically giving contests and doing company-wise problems to get sort of introspection also, whether you're progressing well or not. So follow this routine, follow the techniques that I've said. I just wanted to make a really short video because I've been getting this question a lot in my top mate calls. And by the way, if you're someone who needs help with DSA, you need help with development or any other thing, you need help with your placement preparation, you need a personalized roadmap for your situation, then you can connect with me on TopMate one to one. There I'll be able to personally guide you in your situation and help you in getting to your dream company. So you can connect one to one with me on TopMate for that. The link to my TopMate is going to be in the description box. So like I said, I've been getting this question a lot. That's why I wanted to record this video about this topic. So that's pretty much it. And I will be making a lot more videos about every aspect of placement preparation, whether it's DSA, whether it's development, or whether it's resume or any other thing. I will be making tutorials on pretty much everything that you need to crack your dream company. So make sure that you're subscribed and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching.